There we go. Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have a magnificent guest with us today, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration, and that is none other than our brother, Brother Daryl J. Muhammad, author, author of the new book that is taking the world by storm, The Money Game, so Black people can win and dominate. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Well, alaikum salam, brother Joshua. Thank you, brother, for allowing me to come on your show. It is definitely an honor, brother. You've had so many outstanding guests inside the nation, you know, for me to come behind them, I'm honored. All praise due to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, the first, uh, the first question that we want to know is, um, first of all, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to, to read and learn from this book. But how did the book come about? Well, I tell people, Brother Joshua, it's a 40-year-long journey to write that book, right? Of course, it doesn't take that long to write a book, but that's how long I've been on this journey of financial empowerment, financial freedom, whatever you want to call it, right? So it goes by many, many different names. Now, commonly in, in your generation, get the bag, right? So it's been a long time since 1980. That's when I first got my first uh, how to Buy Real Estate with No Money Down by Ed Beckley. And that opened my eyes, brother. And as we know, being in the nation, once your eyes are opened, you see everything differently and it, and it takes you on a whole totally new trajectory. So it started there and it led me to a lot of different endeavors in my life, personally and professionally, still along that pathway. And eventually it got to this book. It got to this book, The Money Game So Black People Can Win and Dominate. Yes, sir. <laughs> And speaking, and speaking of this book, let's talk about the um, what makes this book, you said, 99% different than any other book. Why that, why that percentage? Yes, sir. 99.9% .9 of different than any other money books. Well, it's because of, the, of the, the theme, the spirit, the content, and the purpose of the book, right? And also, we have to know the author has, has a lot to do with uh, how the book is written and what goes in the book. It, it comes from his experience or her experience. And I've been blessed, Brother Joshua. Allah has blessed me so much to be able to experience things that other Black people have never experienced. For one, I was a uh, stockbroker, now called financial advisor for two major Wall Street firms. Not one, but two, right? Oh, so yeah. one of them was Dean Witter, now Morgan Stanley, and the last one was Charles Schwab. So I tell people all the time, I was blessed to be on Wall Street, looking from the inside out, not the outside in like 99.9% .9 of most people. And then, you know, my entrepreneurial journey, uh, I'm a real estate investor, I have my own real estate course, teaching people how to buy real estate uh, through the technique called wholesaling. And of course, being in the nation of Islam, 32 years now by Allah's grace under the voice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I ask people all the time, who do you know who is black, have that experience writing about money and been in a nation this long under the minister's voice and, and active as a believer. So that goes into the book and it's in a lot is sprinkled all through it, brother, uh, brother Joshua. And I tell people not, not like 99% because people already think, Oh, you're going to talk about crypto. You're going to talk about real estate. You're going to talk about no, 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 no. I got a, some of that in there, but that's not what black people need. We got enough techniques. We got enough strategies, right? We were $1.345 trillion spending power. So we don't need no more money, right? We need something much, 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 much more. And in my book, I call it Resequit Knowledge. We need Resequit Knowledge. That's what we need. Yes, sir. Powerful. And and thank you, everyone, who's showing love all around the world. Sister Miriam says ASA. Family, Lekum Salam, Mimi. Sister Salima says ASA. Lekum Salam, Sister Salima. Um, yes, sir. Well, Brother Daryl, what is resequent knowledge? Resequent knowledge, as I stated on the back of the book, is knowledge that you get prior to general knowledge. And that knowledge has to be specific to that individual, that group of people, as it pertains specifically to their condition, or as we as Black people in America, as it pertains to money. In the Nation of Islam, we call that the knowledge of self, right? Without the knowledge of self, then whatever knowledge you have, we, we can't maximize. We, we can't maximize. That's why we don't need no more techniques. We need the knowledge of self. We need resequent knowledge. We need to understand what happened to us here in America as it pertains to money and economics. And we, we, we have that 
thanks to our research department in one of the books, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews. Mm, mm. Yes, sir. All right. So at, do, during my, um, once you gave me the book, it seems that there's been many chapters and many things in this book that stood out to me. But I wanted to talk about, um, let me see. But we can go, let's talk about the money game, the pillar number two, the expenses. Uh, it's a lifestyle, the first type of expense. Can we talk about some of the expenses that you discuss in the book? Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, a lot of times, brothers and sisters, we think we have a, an expense problem, and, and that might be part of it. But for the most part, we have an income problem. We just don't make enough because if you made, if you spent 80000 but you made 100, 120000 you don't have an expense problem even though you might be wasting money, but you don't have a problem with your expenses. That's why the most honorable Elijah Muhammad told us, live below your means, right? Yes, then you won't have yes, an right. expense problem. But, but expenses is just money that goes out. Money that goes out. You have money that comes in, you have money that goes out. Unfortunately, we live in a credit society, which means we can live beyond our means now with credit, credit cards and other things, right? So we have to really uh, grasp you know, what expenses and track it. We have to track it and see where it's being wasted. Because in this society, Brother Josh, we know that, that, that the enemy will nickel and dime us to death. He'll nickel and dime us until we're broke. Because he knows what to do with nickels and dimes. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do with nickel and dimes. So we say, oh, that's only $5. Oh, that's only $10. That's only $40. That's only $50. See, so I've learned over the years and I share with the readers of the book See, it's not the amount of money. That's irrelevant. It's having the mindset and understanding what to do with money that makes all the difference. Because a wise man, as I talk about in the book, if you you Google, Brother Josh, for those that are listening, you Google how much would a dollar, how much would a penny be worth compounded every day for 30 days? You'll be astonished. A penny. See, so we passing up pennies and nickels and dimes every day. And we're, and we're not, uh, because we don't know the value of it and what to do. So expenses is something that, that's important. Uh, we need to be mindful of it so we won't be wasteful because we know that that's not the spirit of God. God is not, a, is not wasteful. Nothing goes to waste. Excellent. Yes, sir. Hey, say, welcome to Salaam, Naima. Thank you. That's the name says us Lincoln family. Welcome to Salaam. And thank you all for watching. Yes, sir. Well, let's also, I would like to discuss when you said, why bad people have lots of money. And um, some of the eight, and it says eight things you must focus on. Uh, let's, let's talk about what are some of the things that we must focus on? Well, we must focus on, first of all, you cannot attach, and this is one of the biggest things, brothers and sisters. We, can we cannot attach morality to money. Mm. It doesn't have a soul. So we've been conditioned and brainwashed, right? Donald Trump, see, he got a lot of money because he's a crook and all. That has nothing to do with it, right? They have to follow, and I think the minute, I know the minister said in a couple of lectures gone by, right? They follow success principles. They just happen to be wicked, right? Just like we're righteous, more, more righteous than them, but we're broke because we're following broke principles. Mm -hmm. See, that's why we are taught that Islam is mathematics. So whoever applies the mathematics is going to get the benefit of the math. Right. The plane does not fly through the air uh, uh, because, you know, he, he's not he's not wicked. He knows the laws of aerodynamics. So his plane flies in the air, even though he's wicked. See, so we have to understand there's no morality. We got to break that in our brain. We got to recondition ourselves. That, that my book is designed to be a paradigm shift. Paradigm shift It's like the minister taught us, right? Have the paradigm shift to a new educational system. It has to change. It is not right. It has nothing to do with morality. It's not bad, it's not good, it's money. Now, if you are bad or good, you can use it for bad or good. But it is of itself, it's not bad. So bad people, I say that, you know, of course, to get people's attention to, so they can read it. But, but bad people got money because they follow successful money principles. That's why they have it. And they want to expound their, their, their reach. They want to expound their reach. They're not just thinking, I'm good. I got enough, you know, no, no, no. They want it. They want to influence people with their wickedness. So that's what we need to learn, brother. We, we need to not put a morality on money because it's a thing. It's a thing. So that's one of the biggest problems 
uh, that we have to change. Yes, sir. Okay, I like that. Oh, well, this is one of the uh, one of the pages that stood out to me was create the life that you want. Yes, sir. Uh, could you elaborate? What do you mean that we should create the life that we want? Absolutely, absolutely, brother. Well, in my long sojourn on this on this in this study and in this space. You know, I heard it. I think they use Walt Disney's example, right? The guy that started Disney World. Say, yes, by sir. the time he built it, he already created Disney World three times. Once in his mind, second on a piece of paper, and then actually built, built it. See, so we have to be able to write down the lifestyle that you want. Write it down. I give you a formula on how to do it. Make a list of all, you know, I want to take three vacations, four, I want to go here. Write it down. Write what kind of lifestyle. Right. You have living expenses and you have lifestyle expenses, living expenses, which you need as minimum to live, food, shelter, clothes, and maybe some little creature comfort. Right. But lifestyle is what do you want your life to look like? How do you want to live? Not right now, but in the future. Right. And then you list that. You list that on a piece of paper and then you go see what the current dollar value would be for each one of those things and see how much that would total up. And that would be how much money you would need right now today. To live that lifestyle. Mm, mm. See, now, see, by this making these kind of paradigm shit, but Joshua, now you start looking at your nickels and dimes a little bit different. Right? Now you start looking at, well, shoot, if I if that's what I do, then that's what I want. That's not a, you know, that's not a lot of money. I thought it was gonna be a lot. That's not a lot of money. Now, when you look at if an average person they make more money now, but back years gone by, you say. An average person makes a million dollars in a lifetime. $25,000 a year by, by 40 years is a million. A million dollars have passed through your hand. But there's many people that make more than $25,000 a year and, and work 40 years, 30 years. So, so it's a million dollars. It's a million dollars. See, so when you get into the money game and start looking at it, as I call it, from a 30,000-foot view, right, from the, from, the, from the height of an eagle, then you can see everything. You, you can see everything for miles and miles away. So now it starts coming together. Now it starts making sense. Now you start seeing possibilities for yourself, whereas you didn't see it because we, you know, we had our heads down to the ground, so busy grinding, right? And living an average life. Perfect. Yes, sir. <laughs> we told a lot. Thank you, everyone who's watching and tuned in. Where can we get your book, sir? Okay, here's what I want you guys to do. Go to themoneygamebook.com, right? I want you to go there so that way you can get on my email list and we can stay in contact, all right? And when you go to that website, you're going to get two free gifts, two free gifts. One is an audio entitled The Money Game. Uh, it kind of gives you an idea what, what, what the money games mean from, means from my perspective. What do I mean when I say the money game? Uh, you get that free audio, and then sometime in the near future, I haven't picked a date yet, but we're going to have a, a, a master call or a strategy call where you can come on the call live with me and ask me any questions about the book, hmm. any question about the book. Because we have to understand, you know, you can't put everything about money in the book. You can't put it in one book. It won't. It can't be found in just 200 pages. It, it's, it's to prick the consciousness. It's to prick the consciousness to, to cause a paradigm shift so we can do our own discovery. You got to discover it on your own. So that's where they can go, Brother Joshua, to get the two free gifts. And then the second page will take you to a, a, a link where you can hit you can hit Amazon and go to Amazon. But I want you to go through through my site, themoneygamebook.com, and I can get your information and we can stay in contact. Wonderful. Yes, sir. Also, you speak about the five myths about the money game. Can you let us know some of the myths? Yeah, yeah. Well, we covered one of them, right? Okay. But here's the big one that I talk about on my live, on, on my Facebook. I go Every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I go live on my social platforms to talk about the book. Here's one right here. You can be average and win at the money game. You cannot be average and win, not, not to win and dominate. Not to see the, the, the subtitle, Brother Joshua, is, 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 the, is, the, is the subtitle, but it's to qualify. It's only for those that want to win and dominate. Some people don't, everybody don't want to win and dominate. Everybody don't want to be a champion, right? So we, I can't assume that they do. But, you know, for those who do, you, we cannot be average and win. Average does not win because 
there's too many unexpected things that can happen that will happen in your life, right? In my life, in our lives, that require some financial contributions to make it, you know, go away or make it make it better, make the situation better. That's why for those of us who know uh, the the, uh, the statement that Omar Elijah Muhammad made about work, right? Work, heaven, heaven is work, is labor. He says, work as if you're in peril. And I looked up that word peril. Peril means exposed to it, exposed to danger, mm. immediate danger. So he said, work as if. That means you're not in peril, but work as if you're in peril. Work as if you're exposed to it, to danger, immediate danger. You see? So that way we'll have enough. So when danger comes, we'll at least we would have been intelligent enough to, you know, have it. Uh, so in, in consideration, so when things happen in the world we live in, brothers, I mean, you know, it, it, it's more so now than ever before that we'll need more and more and more money for disasters and sickness, everybody dying from cancer, right? So unfortunately, you know, we just have to come to grips and and, and get out the, 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 the denial. We're in denial, a lot of us Black people in America, when it comes to money, right? It, it's a sin not to have money in America. It's a death okay. sentence not to have money in America, right? And as it goes up, your income got to go up. It it it, it don't come. I mean, don't pray that the gas prices go down. Pray that your money goes up. Because if we don't have enough money, brothers and sisters, we can't get good health care. So we're going to die. How many people die because they just can't afford the proper health care? We're going to die because we can't get the best food. So your body... Is not getting the nutrients it needs, so that our organs are not performing at the level it should perform, and it's decaying. So we have to have money so we can get organic food, and we have to have money so if we get sick, we can jump on and be have proactive health, preventive health measures. Right? We won't have these comorbidities. It requires money. That's why you know the messages say all these cars and all that kind of stuff. We spending money in the wrong places. We spending my money in the wrong places. Right, we'll go buy a car, but send our children to public school, then complain about the public. Mm, mm. Take that money and put them in private school. See, so that's why it has to shift. The paradigm has to shift. One point three four trillion dollars is that's just too much money for us to have nothing to show. That lets you know that we don't understand the real power of money. So when you get into the mindset of winning and dominating, that's a whole nother level. That's a whole nother. Level. That's a whole totally different mindset. See, but if we just thinking, like I say in the book, play to win and dominate, not play not to lose. We play not to lose. I want to maintain this lifestyle. I just want to have enough so I won't lose my Range Rover. I want to have just enough so I can hold on to my house. I want to have just enough so I can hold on to this lifestyle. See, that's playing not to lose that lifestyle, not to lose that car, not to lose that home, not to lose, you know what I'm saying, not to lose. But a winner don't play not to lose. A winner plays to win. And then after winning, he said, what can I dominate? Mm, mm, can I dominate? Mm, what can I, how, how can I dominate? And then that goes into a whole nother level of the money game. Whole nother level. Praise be to a lot. Yes, sir. And thank you, Brother Daryl. We have a quick 60-second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. We are grateful for every like, share, and subscription to the People's Podcast. Thank you for every anonymous cash app. Thank you all very much. One second. And we're coming right back to our brother, Brother Daryl. Most of those services. Sister Miriam's ABC I Love Me, children's book and coloring book, and now <laughs> Spanish book. All three available on Amazon.com. Sister Naima's Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country, right here in the studios of Atlanta. Student Minister Sharif Muhammad's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, available on adulsharif.com. And lastly, Brother Joshua Muhammad's book, Cleopatra, as well as No Father, No Excuse, both available on Amazon. Most of those services. Perfect. All right. We're right back to our brother, Brother Daryl. Yes, sir. Brother Daryl, we had a quick, first of all, uh, um, since Naima says, yes, sir, facts. Sister Katina says, I'm like, like, I'm Katina. Thank you, everyone who's watching. 
Yes, I also wanted to uh, get to, oh, this this point where it says, you got money, now what? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we have money, now what? You have to have a purpose for your money before you get your money. If not, then then the then the uh, the magicians of merchants will seduce you out your dollar, right? So we have to have purpose for it. We have to have purpose, and, and that'll be the motivation why we go get it. And and brothers and sisters, it has to be beyond these trinkets and these things, right? It it has to be beyond that. That's that's how we that's how we lose. The people who play to win and dominate, they're winning. They're playing. Because they wanna, they wanna win. They wanna achieve bigger than than themselves. All the folks that you don't like, that you think bad, and that's why they got money. They they got more than just for them. They have more. They have for their children and their children's children. The Bible says a righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That means your grandchildren. That means that you have to put something in place so as your children won't swallow swaddle the money, it still have enough left for your grandchildren. See, so so it has to be bigger than just these things, these things, because what would drive you, what would make you make the sacrifice? Because trust and believe, brother, says it's not easy. Money game win, to win and dominate is not an easy task. That's why very few people win and dominate. It's very difficult, especially black people. And I have in the book, Brother Joshua, about your environment. Do you control your environment? There are environments that we grow up in, and black people in our community, it's not conducive for winning and dominating. Right. We don't have the support mechanisms there. Right. The white man talking about mentors and all. We ain't got no mentors in our neighborhoods like that, like they do. That's speaking from their perspective. Right. That's why I said on the back of the book, you have to have somebody that has the resequent knowledge. Right. And someone who can speak from our perspective. Black America, so-called American Negro. Right. From our perspective, not a foreigner that's black from Africa. No, 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 no ex-slave, children of ex-slaves from our perspective, right? And then we can understand and see what's in our best interest because one is showing us, just like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, one of us have to raise one from among you so we can uh, make sure we communicate clearly to our people and help them to understand that it's bigger than just you, right? We got to build something and have enough more than enough. You got to be to where it's more than enough for me. Way more than enough for me, brother Josh. Way more than enough. All hell can break loose and it's still more than enough for me. And that's <clears> what we know we'll have enough for our children, our children's children. Because it's not really about money. I say that in the money game. The, the, the book is called The Money Game, but it's really not about money. It's not about money. That's why we get lost. We think it's about money. It's not about money. Those that know no, and those who don't, don't know. They, they don't do it because because when I was a stockbroker, real quick, Brother Joshua, I, I remember, you know, going through the computer, looking at all this money, these white folks got all this money. I'm talking about millions and millions and millions of dollars. I'm just going through accounts and looking. And it hit me. I said, why these people still want more money? Why they still have a job and working? You know, we get a couple of dollars. Man, I'm going to quit my job. Right? I'm like, why are they still? Why are they still trying to get more money? That's what I'm telling you about this mindset. Cause they greedy, and I thought that at first, but I said no. Cause I want it, but I'm not greedy, so I'm not gonna believe in something that's contrary to what I want. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I said no. That's not it. There's a lot of reasons why, but I said no. That's not it. They want to make sure that they have enough for their children. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure they have enough so after daddy's gone. Right. They'll still be living off his labor, off his work, off his intelligence, off him knowing how to play this game to win and dominate. That's what it's really about. It's about if we're going to play, you don't want to play to win. Who plays to lose? Oh, we're going to go out there. We're going to play, but we're going to lose. Why play? Why play the game? The only the interesting thing, Brother Joshua, we all play the money game by default. Even a homeless person plays the money game. So it's not like we choose to play the money game. Right. We, we're, we're forced or we, we're, we have no choice. We play the money game by default. Right. But we have to learn how to play it to win on purpose. You won't we won't learn that by default. Beautiful. Yes, sir. And thank you, everyone who's watching all around the world. 
I just want to read something from the book, uh, The Money Game, So Black People Can Win and Dominate by Brother Daryl J. Muhammad. On page 177, it says the goal, at the bottom it says the goal is not money. That's what the that's what the pursuit really is, freedom, not money, but freedom, a full and complete freedom. We need to understand that money can be used as a tool to expand and express our freedom. That's really the divine and purest purpose for money. Pursue financial freedom. Financial empowerment is money's purest form of expression, not tainted by our character flaws, not tainted by ill desires, but in the purest form. Money is to maximize and express freedom and to share that freedom with other people. Share the freedom with your friends, family, and community. That's why you see people with a lot of money, the ballers, the entertainers, have an entourage. Why? Because they want to share that freedom with their friends. What good is freedom if you're by yourself? What good is that, brothers and sisters? That's a very powerful uh, brother there. So you're yes, saying when, when one person gets on, we got to bring you got to bring the family and friends with us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you want to share with them because that should inspire them. Right. You know, just like the minister told Michael Jackson. Right. You want you. Would you rather be in an audience cheering for them or you on the stage and them cheering for you? Right. Say, so yeah. I want to be the one in my family that, you know, have everybody come and visit me and I pay for everything. Right. One of my one of my affirmations is, right, I bring my children to my home in Jamaica every year. I pay for the flights. I pay for the food. I pay for the entertainment. Right. I pay for everything and I give them money when they're there. See, so that's why you have it. That, that's why you have it. I mean, why have it? You have it so, so you can share it with you're the one that's been blessed. Right. You're the one that's been Allah blessed you. You don't keep it to yourself and hoard it for yourself. That's not the spirit of Allah. He didn't give you it to hoard. He gave it to you to share, just like he shared it with, with you and others, right? So, yeah, it, it's, it's about freedom. If your money not give, providing you with freedom, then, then it's, it's making you a slave. You're yeah, a slave yeah. to it instead of it being a slave to you. Money is supposed to serve you. It's your servant. So what I do every time, I just started this recently, share some secrets. And see, once you get in, down going down that rabbit hole, Brother Joshua, see, it, it, it's a never... It's a, it's a forever evolving thing. So what I start doing now is I start, when I whenever I release money, bills or whatever, I give it instructions. I tell it, since it's my servant, it obeys my every command. Okay, good. This money is going towards my bill. I want it to debt. I want you to pay down that debt and, and elate, erase some of the interest that's associated with that debt. Hmm. So tell it what to do. I'm spending it at the grocery. I want this to go, you know, and pay some of the employees at the grocery store. It's just a practice. It's a practice, right? And then you give it. You give it instructions and tell it what to do, get, especially when you get ready to invest. All right, I'm investing this $300,000. I want you to go out and get 20 of your friends. <laughs> yes, sir. And you'd be surprised if that happened. Boy, you'd be shocked. You'd be like, man, I ain't going to tell nobody this trick, you know? But, you know, it, it's just things like that. It's just things like that. So, yeah, it's about freedom. See, our people, when we came here in slavery, brothers and sisters, you got to understand what we want. Right? We wanted freedom. Freedom from this slave experience. Freedom from this slave condition. Freedom from this treatment. I don't think back in the day they say, oh, I want a big house like the master. No. When you're getting hung and lynched and raped and castrated, you don't want them, you know, big house. I want this, this treatment to stop. I want freedom from this torture is about freedom. See, the, the enemy not gonna give you freedom. He'll give you all the money in the world to keep you a slave, but he won't give us no money for freedom. He won't give us that. He won't give us that. So the very thing that your enemy doesn't want you to have, that should be the main thing you should be spending your life trying to go. It's just real simple. Whatever your enemy don't want you to have, you just need to know that's what you need to get. That's why this information is not taught in school. It's not readily available. Honorable, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, man with equal knowledge cannot rule you. So he's not, you're not going to not gonna ever teach us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> to make us equal to him. That's a farce. We got to make us equal to him. That's our job. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. You've been teaching. 
And once again, uh, thank you everyone who was watching. Thank you to our YouTube family, Sister Auntie, Brother Musa, Brother Kente, Sister Hope, everyone who shows love on all of the platforms. Once again, Brother Daryl, how can we uh, get your book and how can we support the book? Yes, go to themoneygamebook.com. Go to themoneygamebook.com. There you'll get two free gifts I'm giving out to everybody who goes to the website, even if you don't buy the book, but I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, but two free gifts. One is an audio called The Money Game. Give you an idea of what, what I mean when I say the money game. Somebody might mean something different, right? But what do I mean when I say the money game? So that's a, a free uh, download audio. You get it instantly. And then sometime in the near future, we're going to have a couple of uh, private calls. We're going to have some calls and we're going to go into the book. For those who have the book, you'll be able to come on and ask me questions like Brother Joshua was asking me questions about the book. Because once again, it's just to scratch the surface. It's to prick your consciousness so you, so you can go and do your own discovery, right? And figure these things out for yourself. But I'm here to help and serve. Our, our people to understand more clearly because see I take a lot of this stuff for granted because I've been on this road for 40 years right but the, but it's, it's not as easy to other people uh, so I'm here to serve and make it crystal clear for us so we can go out here and win and dominate right get enough of us winning and dominate then the message of unity is the most and more powerful than atomic weapon then how many of us can get together who learn how to win and dominate then what can we that's what they do they get together and marry each other because of money, and we say that's wrong and all that kind of stuff, but then we under their power. Right? Thank you, teach me, teach me. Praise be to a lot. People bear witnesses, and Miriam says all praise be to a lot. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone who's watching. Just want to uh, read one more excerpt from the book, The Money Game. This is on the same page, but it, it goes right along with what you're saying. It says, God wants you to be free. Page 177. I grew up always having dogs. Our dogs stayed in the house. But if I let the dog out in the front yard without a leash, he may run wild and I might and I may have to go run after him. He would sniff around and go where he want, wanted to go. Stop where it wants to stop and turn around and come back. See, it's exercising the freedom to explore new territory. That's in the nature of everything God has created. Surely if it's in a dog, it's in the cat then surely without a doubt, if it's 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 in you and I to a greater degree. Yes, sir. Uh, God wants you to be free. Yes, sir. On that, yes. can we leave on that positive note on how God wants us to be free, sir? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you very much, Brother Josh. That's a good one to end on. Yeah, God wants us to be free, brothers and sisters. He wants us to be free, right? The minister told us Savior's Day. He, he quoted the, the, the scripture out of John, right? Know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's it's right. about freedom. Like I said, it's about freedom. God wants us to be free. That's why he gives us what? Free will, right? He wants us to be, that's in the nature of us. So if you and I don't have the nature to want to be free, then that's not even natural. You don't want to be free of poverty and want. You don't want to be free of sickness. You don't want to be free of stress. Yes, we do. We do, but we just don't know how. So, yeah, God wants us to be free. He wants us to be free. We have to be. So that's the that's it is to be free. It's to be free. If you if we live somewhere, we didn't need money because we we grew our food and we got it from the sea and all that kind of you, you, you know, learn how to make your house. I mean, what would you need money for? But you have the freedom to move and to explore and to become. Right. So so we have to understand that God wants us to be free. How dare I let anybody else deprive me of the freedom that I want to have, the spirit of freedom that God has put in my spirit to be free, financially free or any other free, right? How dare I let anybody, including myself, get in the way of that and fight like hell to get them out of your way so we can be free and we can exercise that freedom so we can give hope to our people. Our people are hopeless because there's not enough of us to show them that there's a better way. And also in that book, on that same note, Brother Joshua said, what is your God-given financial potential? Now, who puts that in a money, in a money book? Your God-given financial potential? You mean God <laughs> has a financial potential for me? God, see what I'm saying? God and money. You know, we put that together now. We're talking about old prosperity teaching. See, we just, we just all, we just, we on two extremes when it comes to money. Right? We had we on two extremes. Yeah, you you have a God given financial potential. 
So do I. And our job and my job is to figure out what that is. And you'll never know if you reach a certain point financially, you say, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. That just means you better than most other black people. I'm good. That means you better than from whence you've come, which is good now. Be grateful. But that that that's not the it. How do you know God don't want you with more? Mm. See, the problem is we don't have enough righteous multi-million and billionaires. Righteous. That's the problem. So the people think oh, the only way I can get the big bag like that, I gotta do with those folks are selling dope or whatever, whatever, you know, you know, be crooked in politics, be crooked in. Yeah, that's part of the game, too, to get you entrapped in that if that's what you want or to say, no, I don't want it because I don't want to do those things. You trying to tell me that that God can't make us righteous and multimillionaires and billionaires. I beg your pardon. I don't know what kind of God you worship. Right. He he wants us. What did what did the God Master Father Muhammad promise us in problem number 13? That's right. Money, luxury, good homes, and friendships and all walks of life. That sounds like more than enough to me. That's right. He said money and luxury. He wanted to make it clear. Money and luxury. Good homes. Now, look, go back. Is, is it, did it say home or homes? Homes. Yes, sir. And friendships and all walks of life. Why? Because you need friendship and all walks of life to do something bigger than yourself. You don't need right. friends and all walks of life. You're just trying to get a range broke. I say that because that's my car I'm trying to get. So I'm talking to myself. I'm just letting y'all listen. Right? Yes, so a Range Rover. Right? You don't need God to help you get a Range Rover. You just need to go out there and make you some money and go to the car dealership and buy you a Range Rover. You don't need God to help you get no Range Rover. That's too small for God. He leave that up for you to figure out. Mm, mm, mm. But you trying to build something that's going to affect multi-generations of our people, then yeah, yeah, you need God's help. Because you got to understand, brother Josh, when the higher up you get, the bigger the devil is. Yeah, the level we in the our biggest devil is ourself. But once we break through that and really start climbing and getting to the stratosphere, oh, see, Farrakhan is so high, he's not dealing with devils no more. He's dealing with Satan. That's right. Because he's up at that level. See, so as we get up higher, we see it with our athletes, we see it our entertainers, and they start dealing with devils for real on a whole nother level. See, so if when you play it to win and dominate, all this stuff starts to get exposed to you. Right before you even play the game, so they don't want you to know that until you get in the game and get caught up in the game, and now you become a tool of the game, right? The way they play it by their rules, right? So we have to understand these things so we can go in and really, really do it, really do it on the level that we should be doing, especially those of us in the nation of Islam. We have given the assignment to build a nation. Well, how much money you need for that? Just enough to buy your Range Rover and get your two-story home and be somewhere, you know, safe and secure away from the condition of our people. Now, if you're trying to build no nation, what did our minister say at Savings Day? He said seventy-five thousand dollars. I don't be like Mama said. No, you gonna need billions. Hmm. Isn't that what he said, Brother Josh? That's what he said. Billions back then is what now? See, when you start understanding money, right? You start saying, okay, he said billions then. That was in whatever it was, 70s, 60s, or whatever. So how much is that now? Oh, man, that must be billions on top of billions. Damn. Excuse me. <laughs> you know? Yes, so sir. this little money, I'm talking about 250000 It's like, man, I thought I was, you know, I thought I had reached the pentacle. That's not the pentacle. That's a step in the ladder to the yes, top. Sir. That's God's given. What is your God-given financial potential? So that's in the book, brothers and sisters. If you want to know what your God-given uh, financial potential is, get the book, read that part, and then that'll point you in the right direction. You do not drag a man to freedom. He has to want to go on his own. right? Harriet Tubman couldn't drag. She didn't drag him to freedom. They had to want to be free. right? And if I understood correct, some of them she had to kill because she was, they was about to jeopardize her safety and the future uh, uh, slaves that she was going to come back and get. We don't never hear that part when you hear about Harriet Tubman. She probably, she probably had to say, oh, man, you about to mess up for everybody? Oh, no, you got to go. Pop, pop. So your God-given financial potential. We all have it, brothers and sisters, and God knows it's not where we are. And it's definitely not doing what we're doing with what we have. Because remember, the scripture says, too much is given, much is required. 
And depending on how we are with small things, Allah will make us masters over much. We want big, but we haven't mastered the little that we have. So we have disqualified ourselves to get what's ours and get more. Beautiful. Yes, sir. And on that positive note, um, I want to, Brother Adio Nasur, so that's make him shout out for number six, Baltimore. Let's fly, Brother Adio Nasur. Thank you, everyone who's watching all around the world. That positive note, we want to thank you again, um, Brother Daryl, for giving us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And inshallah, this is just a part one. We'll get you back on for a part two and many more to come so you can continue to help us grow and expand our thinking. Um, this is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Well, alaikum salam. Thank you, Brother Josh. And please give the greetings to your father, my first Supreme Captain. And he has helped make me the Muslim that I am under his under his uh, direction. So please give him my love. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. We'll do, do, we'll do that for you. And please give the greetings to your family and the believers holding it down in Houston. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Well, alaikum salam. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for watching.